just remain standing for prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. And all that, God, that you have done for us, just allowing us to be here today. God, thank you for keeping us safe to get us here. And Father, I pray, God, that there be one here, God, today. God, that may be struggling in life. God, that may be going through circumstances and situations, God, that is completely out of their control. Father, I pray, God, that you step in the midst of their problem. And God, show yourself real and strong. Father, the day I pray that be ones, God, that don't know you and their free pardon of sin. Father, the day would be the day. God, that you could reach down, Father, that I could, they could ever reach up. And God, that you change their life forever. Father, I pray, God, that you'd help the saints of God today and encourage them. Encourage us all, Lord Jesus, bless the preaching hour, all the songs of Zion. That, God, that what we do today would glorify you in all that we do. Every word that comes out of our mouths, every thought that goes through our mind. Father, I pray for it be your glory, for your honor, God, today. Bless us, God, today. Thank you, Lord, for the precious blood that was shed at Calvary. And that blood breaks every chain. Father, we love you and we thank you for your goodness, your grace. And God will give you praise and glory for all that you do with us, God, today. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people say it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
you thankful for a prison shaking Savior? You say, well, preacher, I just can't get into much, much about that. I, I can't get into that too much. Uh, maybe you've never been in a prison before. Remember, you don't know what it's like to be bound up before. I, I just about shouted the victory back there in the back. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's all right. Yes. She can just worship it. She can pray. Yes. Hallelujah. They thought they was going to have to give up on me. But God can turn things around. I'm glad God will pick somebody up. I'm glad God is still a miracle working God. He's still a prison shaking God. He's still a God that does exceeding and abundantly above all we can think or ask. Oh, that religion is just a bunch of hocus pocus. You don't know the same God I serve. Thank God he's a God that will get right down in the middle of where you're at. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you're facing today, the same God that delivered there, he's the same God that can deliver in your situation. Let's give him praise and honor. Let's do this. If you're here today for the very first time, Oh, yeah. Well, go ahead. First of all, I'd like to just say uh, thank you to all that, uh, that prayed for me. Um, I know you don't need it, but I just make it easy for you. All right. April the 19th, I was driving a tractor trailer. Raymond and Terry would know all about this. And the trailer went a little bit off the road. Kind of corrected to get it back on the road, and it blew two tires. And with all the weight, it just went ahead and flipped over. And I don't remember anything about the wreck. I don't remember anything about being knocked out. <coughs> but I've been told a lot of stuff. I still suffer from short-term memory loss and I got kind of paralyzed. And my mom always told me who prayed for me, who asked about me. And I just want to say right now, Miss Fraley, I still remember you. Amen. And I still remember that little bitty hand that's, that's just patting along. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that, that prayed for me. I'm not out of the woods yet, but I'm not where I was either. Amen. Amen. Didn't you get to us? Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord, we're supposed to be greeting first time guests, not crying. <sighs> Kelly and I went off to New York City. Lynn, when all this happened, we had a, an event, where, well, really an event, we are going to a special service, for us anyway, at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. And I sent in a request that, that have that church pray for you. And that night, they have a spell on Tuesday nights that prayer service. We went and we had a pray over our church. But we had a pray for you as well. And I'll never forget <coughs> Colin, Midge, we got back to the hotel and they were supposed to make a decision that day. And everything leading up to that decision looked like it was going in the wrong direction. And I called her and I said, how, how did the meeting go? She said, preacher, we're not going to worry. She began to tell me how God began to turn things around. And I don't know how often this happens at the hotel in New York, but I just started worshiping, praising God right there in the hotel room. Because God came through one more time. Amen. Now, some of us may not have a story as dramatic as that. But I can promise you this. There's been time after time after time that God has done something amazing in your life. Amen. God has done something wonderful in life. I, I got to thinking about this, Miss Phyllis. What will it be like when we finally get to heaven and we figure out 
And God lets us see of the many things that he did for us that we didn't even know. The times that he kept us out of harm's way. That he kept his hand over us and we didn't even know. What a God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I thank you for being here today. We're going to go to church just for a little while. Some of you are here uh, with, uh, with us for the uh, book bags and all that. We're going to do that here in just a little while. Uh, we're just going to have a little bit of church. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, if you're here today for the very first time, do something easy. Just remain seated right there where you're at. But if you've been here before, uh, we're standing all over the congregation this morning. We're going to receive and recognize those uh, that are here today with us for the very first time. Uh, let's let's give them a, a, a hand clap of
God today. When you find your place, please remain standing as we worship the Lord today together. Standing all over. I'm glad that he's an amazing God. But there's some grace that's amazing. Sometimes we don't realize just how good grace really is. I was talking to someone the other day, and uh, I had to do a funeral for our family. And I was talking to a part of the family I hadn't seen in a good many years. His wife had passed away of cancer. And uh, he went through that with her, every stage of it, every hour, every day. And she used to tell him, says, isn't God's grace amazing? And he looked at her and said, I know God's grace is amazing, but you get to experience really how God's grace is amazing. Through the suffering that she had up to the very last moment that she drew her last breath, she talked about how good grace was. I don't believe we know how good grace is until we suffer a little bit. Until we go through some things that guess what we didn't think that we could ever get through. We want to sing a song that just simply talks about that grace. Yes.
the book of James. That's in the New Testament, the book of James. I, uh, I want to be as brief as I can. Be as brief as I can, and uh, I know some of you are here and you've got things you have to do, and I appreciate you coming by uh, to be part and uh, help us be a blessing to you. Um, we appreciate all those that gave toward the uh, uh, book bag uh, effort that we uh, started a few weeks ago, and then uh, we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do the remainder of the service. James chapter number two. James chapter number 2, and we're going to look down at verse number 14, James chapter 2 and verse 14. If you're able, uh, stand with us uh, uh, this morning. We're going to read the Word of God together, James chapter 2 and verse number 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. We'll stop. We'll stop reading right there and we'll pick up the rest. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you'd help us. I pray, God, you'd make preaching easy for just a little while. Lord, touch us and use us in this hour. Speak to us. Lord, we thank you for all you've done. And Lord, what you're going to do here in this place. Lord, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Here in the book of James, uh, it speaks about works and it speaks about faith. And I, I, I was watching here a while back a situation that was unfolding where a natural disaster had taken place. And uh, those things happen around our country and around the world uh, almost uh, daily, if you're talking about around the world, but uh, in, in around our country. Uh, uh, fairly frequently, and you'll see situations where there's great flooding, or there'll be uh, wildfires that have gone, gone out of control. Uh, uh, you'll see all sorts of landslides, uh, even earthquakes and things of that nature that happen. And I want to say that I appreciate people that step in during those situations and during those uh, disasters. But when they show up, they do not show up and pat someone on the back and say, you know what, if you'll just believe that better days are coming, uh, then it's going to be okay. Uh, I'm all for faith. I believe in faith. And uh, uh, we, we, we believe uh, that God would touch Lynn and we thank God for what he's done. But I believe in more uh, than just faith. Sometimes God wants us to put feet to our prayers, and God wants to get involved in what we're doing. The Bible said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. I, I would say that most of us would believe, and most of us would say, where well, I'm, I'm, I'm a faith type person. I believe in the things, uh, the good things of God. I believe that God is in control. Uh, most of us would, would agree with that statement. We would even probably, most of us would even say that this uh, land, this country, it is a God-fearing nation uh, in that we were founded on those principles and all that. But I'm here to say, I'm here to declare, I'm here to be a voice crying in the wilderness that not everybody uh, that speaks the word of faith, uh, it has a living, working faith down in their heart. I believe there are many people that will end up in a devil's hell uh, believing they did the right thing, they got baptized, they joined the church, they did good works, they gave an offering, but they were never changed on the inside. If you've never been washed in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot go to heaven. You say, well, preacher, I've done good things. I, I'm a good person. I, I have good morals about me. I don't tell lies. I don't steal. I've never killed anybody. But 
you're still on your way to a devil's hell unless until you've been born again by the good grace of God. I believe every one of us in this place should possess a working faith in our life. I believe that you know, the faith that lives down on the inside of you ought to work its way out of you. How? Uh, and why do you say that, preacher? I'm going to give you some reasons right out of the scripture here this morning. Look at verse number 17, if you will. Verse number 17, the Bible said, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. I don't know how many uh, funerals that I've preached. I don't know now how many times that I've been in a situation uh, where the circumstances were dire, where the situation uh, was urgent, and people in a time of hurt, and people in a time of distress, and people in a time of, uh, uh, of feeling emotional made some sort of profession. There's a lot of people that will come, come to, a, a, to a church service, and when the emotions are moving and the emotions are high, and perhaps it's a, a, a special situation that you've been talked into, that you've been made to be a part of, uh, they, they'll go and they'll make some sort of profession. Oh yeah, I believe Jesus loved me. I believe Jesus died for me. But there's never a change in their life afterward. Can I say this? If, if the, the gospel that you believe, if the gospel that you receive does not change your life, I would not count on it changing my eternity. If it does not change how you live, I, I would not count on it changing how I die. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you there's a God that loves you. There's a God that loves you so much He does not want you to stay like you are. He wants to change your life. You say, preacher, well, does that mean I have to get a haircut? Does that mean I have to put on certain type of clothes? It doesn't mean that any of that. What it means is there's got to be a heart transformation. There's got to be a life change. There's got to be something that you can't do for yourself, but there's a God in glory who's waiting to do it. There's a great physician that wants to get involved. There's somebody that wants to turn your life around. A lot of folk will go to a church service and make it. Maybe even walk down to an altar. But they never repent of their sins. The Bible still says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Luke 13. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Jesus turned around and said it twice. They make a profession, but they never repent. There's no change. They continue in their sin. There's no consequence. There's no remorse. You don't love God any more than you did before you went down there and prayed those words. You say, preacher, how can I know that I'm saved? The Bible said, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. How can I know? How can I really know? How can I truly know that Jesus lives on the inside of me? You cannot sin and get by with it. You cannot sin and enjoy it. If you've ever been saved by the good grace of God, just like your mama and your daddy raised you, they corrected you when you got out of line. When you start getting out of line with a holy, a thrice holy God, he will correct you. The Bible said if you be without chastisement, then, then you don't know who your daddy is. Hey, I'm glad, praise be to God, that every once in a while, God still has my number. And God still takes takes me around the woodshed, and God still corrects me. That lets me know I'm one of His, and He's mine. I thank God for His correction in my life. Amen. You can sin with no consequence. You can sin with no remorse. You don't have any desire to serve God. You don't have any desire to be around the people of God, the, the places of God, the praise of God. Some, some of you right now, you might even be bothered. Why in the world's that preacher got to yell and scream and sweat like he's a doing? I ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet, have you? <laughs> Why did he, does he have to tell me like that? <laughs> you know what I found out, Miss Fraley? I've been reading this book not, not quite as long as you have. I hadn't read it probably. I hadn't read it through as many times as you have. But I've read it long enough to know this. When I find something in it that don't just sit right, it's not because something's wrong with this book. It's because something's wrong with this boy. There's something wrong on the inside of me when I can't read the Word of God and it not help me and encourage me. Hey, I'm here to tell you, there's a God that wants to change you. Amen. 
Amen. You know, I, I've been pastoring now for 14 years or so, and uh, I've been involved in church since I got saved, and that was uh, 1989, so almost 30 years. Uh, hallelujah, I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I've been around church, and I've been around church people enough to know this. There's a lot of people that make up church roles. There's a lot of people that sit on church pews that have dead faith. They get stirred for a week or two after we have revival. Oh man, they might even uh, volunteer to serve in vacation Bible school. They'll go to uh, youth camp. Uh, man, and then uh, after just a little while, it's back to business as usual. It's back to doing the same old thing. It's back to being the same old you and the same old me. Hey, can I tell you this? I love people that come to revival meetings. I love people that get involved in vacation Bible school and outreach opportunities and all that. I love all that. I think you ought to. I pat you on the back. I'm your cheerleader. I'm for you. But can I tell you this? We have church 52 weeks a year. We're here every week. We're here trying to serve God and praise God. And I might not be your favorite preacher. I might not be your favorite evangelist. But there's a man of God that will stand in a pulpit and preach what thus saith the Lord. I believe if you ever really truly get born again, you're going to want to hear what the Word of God says. Somebody said it like this. God doesn't use spare change and spare time to build a church. Nope. Too many of us will go, we, we want to serve God when it's convenient. We don't serve God when it feels good. We don't serve God when, it's, when, when, when everything just lines up just right. Then, maybe then, we'll show up at church. I don't believe that's the kind of salvation that this Bible is talking about. And we'll, we'll get to it here in just a little bit. But in Hebrews chapter number 11, the Bible said there were saints of God that were sown in two. They were chased into the mountains, chased into the dens. They were thrown in dens with lions. And here, here we are, church of 2018. If the air condition is not just right. <laughs> this past Sunday night, we were blessed to go over and be a part of the service of another church. And it was a smaller congregation. And uh, I don't know if something was wrong with air condition. Air condition didn't, didn't work. I don't know what happened. But it was hot. <laughs> I'm talking about, uh, I had folk that, 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 that come here regularly that, that were involved in that service that they like to have their blankets and stuff like that. <laughs> they like to have their, their little shawls and their cover-ups. Over there I saw them with them fans. <laughs> and I thought, you know, there's a lot of people that we won't serve God if things don't just line up just right. If the things are not comfortable like we think they ought to be, we're not going to serve God. Now, I'm not saying just because you didn't come Sunday, Sunday night that you're out of the will of God. I'm not telling you that. I, I, I'm not even uh, I hinted at that in, in the least. But what I am saying is this. We look for excuses. Why we can't. Amen. Instead of reasons why we should. Amen. Amen. Let me. Uh, you might be saved. But you're not where you need to be. When you start thinking like this. Well do I really have to? Man I. I, I just don't feel like it. You know what. Sometimes this old flesh. It don't feel like praising God. In fact uh, Paul told us. Said I, I've got a flesh man. And I've got a spirit man. The spirit man wants to serve God. The spirit man wants to praise God. The spirit man wants to worship God. But this flesh man, when I want to do good, then the flesh man, he don't want to do right. There's going to be rarely occasion uh, that this flesh man wants to do right. When this carnal man wants to do right. But you, if you're saved by the grace of God, there's a spirit man that lives down on the inside of you. Uh, and he will help you. Uh, and you can worship God even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Faith that is dead. <laughs> there are people that, if I were to ask somebody in your family, your friends, they would say, you know, uh, I feel like, I think they're saved. I, I feel like they are. You know, there was that one time way back in revival 
when they went down there and prayed and, and they went to church, they came to church sometimes, I feel like they might be saved. You know, I do a lot of funerals and uh, for whatever reason, I end up preaching in, in a good bit of funerals. And sometimes there will be a family where the person has taken care of things ahead of time. They've got insurance. They've got life insurance. They've got a policy that the family will be left behind financially secure. And that's wonderful. And that's great. But the most important thing you can leave behind is not dollar signs. The most important thing you'll ever leave behind is don't leave with a question mark. When I leave out of here, Brother Mike, I want to leave with an exclamation point. I want everybody to know that there went an old boy, and I know without a doubt, I'm going to see him in heaven one day. I don't want to have to worry about it. I don't want you to have to worry about it. I certainly don't want my family to have to worry about it. If you ever read about it in the paper and you read that I have died, don't you believe a word of that? Because I'm more alive then than I'll ever be. I'm glad I got a God that changed my life. To this question tonight, this morning, are you are you saved? Do you know without a doubt you're ready to meet God where you sit? You're ready to meet God just like you are. There's a faith that's dead. There's a faith that's deceiving. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? There's a lot of people that have a heart, or have a head knowledge, and they have no heart knowledge. They have no heart change. They have no uh, God that lives on the inside of them. Oh, they know all about it. They know the scriptures. Some folk can uh, quote scriptures. They can tell you they believe that Jesus lived and died for 33 and a half years, that he lived a perfect, sinless life. They believe he died on the cross. They believe that he, there were seven uh, things that he said there from the cross. They believe all that. They believe that he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave on the third day. They believe all that, but there's never been a change on the inside of them, and you can know all about it right here, but until it gets down here, uh, there's never going to be a change change in your life, and there certainly won't be a change in your address after this life. There's a faith that is deceiving. The devils believe and tremble. The devils believe and tremble. They believe all that. They're scared about it. They've seen what the power of God and the fear of God, and they've seen what the judgment of God can do. Can I remind you of this? It's not all about this. It's that you say, well, preacher, I'm going to live a good life. I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to live life to the full. And I'm going to take in everything that this whole world has to offer. Can I remind you uh, that there's coming a day uh, that you'll stand before a holy God? The Bible said that every man will stand uh, before God. Uh, and the Bible also tells me that every knee shall bow uh, to Jesus of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. Uh, and we'll all have to proclaim, uh, we'll all have to profess uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, if you're saved, you'll enter into ever everlasting joy. Amen. But if you're not saved, there's a place called hell yep. that was created for the demons and for Satan and all, all his angels. God never wanted you to go there. But there's been people time and time and time again, just as long as this whole world's been going, they've been rejecting God's Savior. Rejecting God's sacrifice, rejecting God's purpose, rejecting God's plan, and they end up in a place called hell. But can I tell you this? Let, let, me, let, me, let me read you a verse. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance uh, to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You know, <coughs> I, I, I'm sad to say this, but as a pastor, 
a lot of times I'm <coughs> privy to more information about a situation and things like that. People will come to me and I'll counsel with them. And something in their life falls apart. Or maybe they were into something that they got caught in. And because of that, they decide, you know, now it's time to get right with God. Now it's time to fix this. I'm going to pray. God's going to forgive me. And sadly, I've seen those same people go back into the same mess. See, they were never really sorry. They never really had godly sorrow for their sin. They were sorry they got caught. I'm afraid, as a lot of people have said on church pews, they've never truly repented of their sins. A lot of they got they sorry, they got caught, they got embarrassed, they got everybody knew about it. There was some sort of repercussion for it. But they weren't ready to give up and lay it down. There's some of you right now, you get saved. You know that God's dealing with your heart. You know that God's knocking on your heart. So you know that God's drawing you. But you know that I'm not willing to give up all the stuff I left at home. I got drink at home. I got partying at home. I got more stuff to do. I got my life to live. I got more time. That's the biggest lie the devil ever told. You've got more time. There was a fatal accident right here on the highway in front of us up the road not too long ago. Uh, uh, and I can promise you this, that the devil would tell those people, you've got more time. There may be somebody that may not even make it home this day. You may not ever make it home today. And the devil's telling you, don't worry about it. You're not old enough to worry about that right now. You'll have time to get saved uh, uh, later on in life. Uh, you can get things right with God on your own choice, on your own time. Can I tell you this? Until and unless God is calling you, you can know on this altar all you want to. You can cry. You can pray. You can scream. You can call out to God. And unless he's drawing you, you'll never get saved. Except a man be drawn. Let's, let's, I want to give you a book. Find uh, John chapter number 6. I want you to see it. John chapter number 6. And uh, look at verse number 44, I believe it is. John chapter number 6 and verse number 44. No man can come to me except the Father with which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. He said, well, preacher, I can pray the Romans road, can I? Can I confess my sin and I'll just be okay? No man. What did the Bible say? No man. Give me the first part. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Unless the Spirit of God was drawing him. You can't get saved. You say, well, preacher, you're, that's off of doom and gloom. What I'm telling you is this, that I believe there are many in this room right now that God's knocking. God's drawing. God's speaking to you. 2 Corinthians 6, verse number 2 said this, Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You say, well, preacher, I've got to go home and fix this. Preacher, I've got to go home and fix that. Preacher, I've got to go home and get rid of that stuff. Preacher, I've got to go home and, 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 and get through with all that. I, I spent a lot of money on that. You can leave today differently. You say, preacher, but what about that stuff back at home? God can fix that stuff back at home. God can handle that stuff back at home. But what God wants right now, what God's talking about right now, who God's talking to this morning is you. God wants you to get your life right with Him. God's telling you, you by His prophet this morning, by His preacher this morning, God's telling you this morning, there's a judgment day coming that God today you're the Savior, but tomorrow he could be your judge. Yeah. Have you been deceived? So that you come to the piano. I'm going to give you this last one. There's a faith. Not only we see there's a faith that is dead, we see a faith that is deceiving. And I'm glad there's a faith that delivers. Verse 22 said, Seest thou how faith 
wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. I'll tell you a story. We read about Abraham here and how that God delivered him, how God helped him, how God blessed him in that situation. But there's another person that's in the same story over the book of Hebrews and it starts talking about the, what we call the, the heroes of faith, the hall of faith. Hebrews chapter number 11 says this, By faith heart, the harlot Rahab, Perish not with them that believe not, and she had received the spies. There was a girl, the Bible calls her a harlot, we all know what that is. She lived in a town called Jericho. God sent his people to Jericho to spy out the city, and God was going to bring destruction on that city. She showed the spies kindness. She hit them while the people of Jericho, the soldiers and all that, were looking for them, trying to kill them. And she said, she said, make me a promise. When you come, remember me. And they said, hang a scarlet thread out the window. If we see it, we won't destroy this house. Sure enough, that happened. She was spared. Somewhere, the Bible doesn't exactly tell us exactly what, what all goes on. But somewhere in all that, she began to believe what they were preaching. She began to believe the God that they were serving. God made a change in her life. And the Bible tells me in the, over in the book of Matthew, sometimes we read through, anybody ever heard of what they call the genealogy of Christ? Sometimes you read that and you think, well, this is kind of boring. Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 5, and Saul, Salmon, or Solomon, uh, or Salmon rather, begat uh, Booz, or Bo, who we know as Boaz, of Rachel, or Rachel, Rahab. So we see that there's a guy by the name of Boaz that was born to a lady by the name of Rahab. Well, Boaz had, a, had, had somebody named Obi with his daughter, or with his wife, Ruth. Well, Obi had a boy named Jesse. Jesse had a boy named David. And David was the king of Israel. Here's what I want to tell you. I'm telling you there's a faith that delivers. The devil knows your name. But he'll call you out by your sin. He'll remind you of all your past. He'll remind you of everything you was. He was he'll remind you of everything you've done. The devil knows he knows your name, but he's gonna call you by your sin. But my God, my God, he knows your sin, but he'll call you by your name. He, you don't have to be identified with where you came from. You don't have to be identified with who you used to be. You don't have to be identified with what everybody else says about you and what everybody else knows about you. There's a faith uh, that can deliver you today. Uh, there's a God uh, that can change you today. You say, preacher, you don't know me. You don't know where I came from. You don't know what I've been into. You don't know what's happened in my life. Uh, what I do know is this. Uh, there's enough blood uh, to cover all your sin. There's enough blood. You're a, you're a saving God. You're a redeeming God. 
You're a God that, that delivers. And Lord, I just want to tell you, I love you. And I thank you for that. While these are coming, and we're just thanking God that he is a God that saves. He's a God that transforms. He's a God that delivers. We thank him for that. Now, you're here this morning, and you say, Preacher, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I need to be with God. I know there's some things in my life that are not right this morning. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I will not come to you. I won't call you out. I won't embarrass you, but I would love to pray for you. You say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I need to be, be with God. I want you to slip your hand up and right back now. Preacher, would you pray with me? We see those, we see those, we see those, we see those. Many hands are going up. I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I need to be with God this morning. Thank you for being honest. Father, we, 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 we see the hands, you see the hands. God, I pray you touch them. I pray you help them, everyone. Lord, I ask you, God, that you touch hearts right now. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I do not know for sure that I'm saved. I do not know without the shadow of a doubt that my heart is right with God. But Preacher, this morning God's speaking to me. God's talking to me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I wonder if you just slip your hand up. Preacher, God's speaking to my heart this morning. I know that He's talking to me about salvation. We see these, we see these, we see these. Is there somebody else? Preacher, here's my hand. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm going to embarrass you. Thank you. Is there somebody else? Preacher, would you pray for me? Thank you. Thank you. Preacher, I do not know for sure. But God's talking to me right now. Would you pray? I'm getting ready to pray. And we're going to pray a prayer together. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for every person that raised their hand. Maybe they didn't. But God... You're speaking to hearts and you're speaking to lives. You're calling us to live for you. We're calling us to serve you. Lord, have your will and have your way in our hearts. With heads bowed and eyes closed while these continue to pray. You're here this morning say, from that grave. Jesus, one day I want you to come back for me. I want to know that heaven is my home. With heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe you prayed that prayer. I wonder how many of us just throw our hand up. Preacher, I prayed that prayer and I meant it in my heart. We see several. Many hands are going up. Many hands are going up. I prayed that prayer and I asked Jesus to be my Savior today. I know He's my Lord. Now I want you to do this. We've got some folks that are going to help you. They're going to pray with you. I've got some booklets here. It's a help now that you're saved. Now I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm not asking you to make a move before, but I am asking you now. If you know that God's doing something in your life, and you want to live for Him, and you want for your life to count, I want you to step out of your view, and I want you to come join me right here at this altar. I want you to come on, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Several are coming. Thank you for coming. Come on. Come on. We're going to need some men and some ladies and some Bibles. Come pray. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Come on, God. Just come on up here. We're going to get some folk right here. I'm going to give you this. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right. Let's get some folk over here. Got some Bibles. Come on. Thank you. 
All these are continuing in Christ. They're who have already asked the Lord into their heart and set as their Savior. Maybe you're here and say, Preacher, Preacher, I'm dealing with it. God's dealing with me. And I just can't give up here right now. I can't go home right now. God's extending this opportunity for you. God's telling you that he, is, he loves you. Oh, He loves all of evil, but He loves you. He wants to change your life. He wants to save you today. Would you let Him? While we wait just a moment more, is there someone else? Preacher, I can't go home like I can. I need Jesus in my heart. I need Jesus in my life. I need the Lord. I need salvation. Is there somebody by the lifted hand? God's dealing with me, preacher. I can't leave. Hallelujah. Bless his name.